Yes, I think, Carlos, you need to stop sharing. Okay, so we're running a bit late, I'll try to keep it short. Hello everyone, um, thanks for, uh, for being here. I'm very glad I can reiterate, I'm very glad to finally be able to speak in, uh, in front of people rather than just in front of the screen. Um, I'm Andrea Silva, I'm a postdoc here in, uh, in CISA, in the group of uh, Andrea Vanossi. And uh, today I will be speaking of uh, uh, this work we recently published in Nanoscale about the critical peeling of uh, Tether nano ribbon absorbed on uh, metal surfaces. So uh, peeling is a concept we are all quite familiar with from since we were kids and uh, we had to take off the adhesive tape from after we scratch ourselves. And then some of us grew up to be engineers and decided to model this uh, process. And uh, in particular, Kendall and Rivlin in the last uh, past century, they uh, described this uh, classic uh, problem of, of tribology of an adhesive elastic film uh, adhering, adhering on a rigid substrate, which is peeled at a constant force and uh, angle from the, from the substrate. Um, the peeling here proceeds like in this video uh, with the force moving towards the tail, which is uh, immobile, and so the peeling proceeds at a constant angle as, the, uh, as it's uh, peeled off of the, of the substrate. And Kendall described it with a, with a nice theory, including the elasticity with the, the, the force as a function of the peeling angle. With the advent of uh, nanotechnology, uh, peeling was observed also at the nanoscale and found to be uh, rather different. Uh, in particular, Kawai and co co-workers in, uh, in Basel in um, 2016, they managed to uh, absorb a nano ribbon on uh, gold surfaces. And with an AFM tip, they were able to go and pick up this uh, ribbon at one end they were able to lift it and uh, move it around, discovering that, first of all, the interface is uh, super lubric, so the friction doesn't depend on the, on the length. And uh, in this case, the peeling occurs in an opposite way compared to, to Kendall. So here, the tail being super lubric is free to slide, and the, the point of lifting is instead fixed. So we have that the peeling proceeds vertically, consuming the ribbon from the, from the tail. So this experiment sparked some uh, interest, and uh, uh, in particular, uh, here in, in Trieste, Gillian co-worker modeled the, the interface, uh, understanding that the superlubric behavior is controlled by the Moiré pattern, compensation of the, of the nanoribbon, and which depends on the orientation. And in particular, there is always a bit of stick-slip uh, residual due to the fact that the, at the tail and at the peeling front, the Moiré is not compensated. So you always have a bit of stick-slip of the nanoribbon. And also they found that the dynamic of the system is uh, quite rich and it depends heavily on the uh, lifting height of the, of the nanoribbon. So if you lift a little and you start sliding, it's a smooth sliding, but as you increase the lifting height and you drag the, the ribbon around, the system uh, changes the dynamic and undergo mul some multi-slip regimes with some hysteresis between the back and forth direction. This behavior is... Uh, um, not uh, restricted to this uh, system. Recently, uh, it's been observed uh, something similar for uh, graphene over uh, an HBN substrate. And this uh, uh, technique has some uh, application. It could be used to uh, probe the elasticity of uh, macromolecules, like DNA absorbs, uh, absorbed on uh, graphene. And uh, you can peel it and see the, the elasticity of the whole molecule and how different bases adhere to the, to the system. So um, this uh, super lubric peeling was uh, also modeled with a continuous uh, one-dimensional model by Gilli. And uh, the, in here, we identify two regimes, like a, a, a first one where the peeling starts, and we have to build the bending uh, angle at which the peeling proceeds. And what, once this angle is built and it reaches uh, 90 degrees, the peeling proceeds at a constant angle, and the ribbon is just consumed uh, from the, from the tail, but the, there is no, no more structural change in the, in the shape of the peeling. And 
this, uh, this simple picture was confirmed by the experiments where they measure the derivative of the force with respect to the, uh, of the height, which is the frequency shift of the cantilever. And indeed, this uh, saturation behavior was observed in, uh, in this uh, experiment of uh, graphene on ribbon on gold. So the Kendall and Gilly limit are sort of, uh, Kendall and Gilly model are the limiting cases of a fixed and a free tail during this peeling. And in both cases, the peeling occurs at constant force and angle. Uh, but an intriguing third situation that might be relevant for experiments is uh, when the, the superlubric ribbon is actually tethered by the tail by some defect, like a step edge in the, in the metal surface, some adsorbates, or uh, intersection with other uh, ribbons. So in this case, we can uh, introduce this uh, new regime <coughs> in the model and uh, see what, uh, what we get. Like, one would expect, uh, could expect some uh, rather trivial behavior with some force and angle in between the cases. But I should show you in a second that that is not the case and somewhat more rich critical uh, uh, phenomena, of course, when this uh, new constraint is introduced in the system. So we can model the, the, the peeling of this nano ribbon like this. We have like our <coughs> with, uh, graphene of with uh, W uh, absorbed on the gold surface and we assume that the substrate is rigid so there is no corrugation, there is only addition energy, and we start with an harmonic tether because it's not clear what the tether would actually be in the, in the experiments. So we can write down the energy, which is divided in an ad in adhesive part, uh, a bending part which describes the cost of building a bending interface, the tethering of the extension of the tail, and, in, and, in, uh, and the intrinsic elasticity of the nano ribbon. So once we have the equation, of, uh, for the energy, we can uh, start by solving it numerically and uh, see the evolution of the energy as we proceed with the peeling. So here uh, we have the total energy of the system as a function of the peeling height, normalized by the length of the nano ribbon. And we explore the behavior at different uh, uh, value of the tethering strength because uh, we would like to see what's the difference with this sort of uh, unknown parameter of the, of the model since it's not given by the current experiments. It's instructive to decompose this energy into uh, three contributions. So we have the adhesion gain due to the fact that the adherent part of the nano ribbon gains energy by interacting with the gold. And then we have the, the penalty due to the creation of the bending interface, of the bending angle of the interface while we peel the ribbon and the penalty from extending the tether at the tail. And it is very clear, especially looking at the bending penalty, that this peeling proceeds uh, in uh, two regimes. So we can divide it here for the strongest tether. Uh, a bending part, uh, where a bending regime, where like the bending energy uh, is increases as is the dominant contribution of the, of the peeling, uh, which then becomes irrelevant once the, the tethering uh, starts to uh, elongate and dominates the, the whole process. And we enter this uh, tether regime at larger height. So, this, we understand the, the energy economy of this, uh, of this system, and now we can wonder if it has some uh, effect on the structure of the, well, uh, of the peeling uh, process. And in particular, we can look at the two uh, parameters, which are the bending angle and the force as a function of the lifting height. And we see that, uh, indeed, here we still see two clear uh, different regimes, and the, both the bending angle and the force are not constant. In, in contrast with the two limiting cases of uh, Kendall and uh, Gilly, but they change with the, with the peeling. And uh, in particular, um, if we focus on the steady state uh, regime of, uh, of the tether part, by ignoring the bending rigidity, we can solve the model analytically and uh, extract the coefficient of, uh, for the scaling of this uh, regime, which are reported here. So, uh, and uh, sure with dotted lines uh, in the plots. So we see that the uh, bending angle scales uh, as a, uh, the height to the power of minus one third, and opposite to this, the force needed to keep peeling of the ribbon increases as the, as the peeling proceeds as, with a fractional exponent of the, of the height as well. And in particular, we start to see here that the, the, the touched part of the ribbon scales uh, in, a, in a super linear fashion compared to the peeling height. And this is due to the fact that, I will show you in a second, there are two different peeling fronts speaking with each other, which consumes the ribbon uh, faster than uh, in the limiting cases of uh, Kendall and Gilly. And, and we see also that this uh, behavior is um, uh, resi resilient to the value of the parameter over several order of magnitude. So it's, for a, for a harmonic tether, it's a general uh, feature. 
another information we can extract from uh, this uh, simple analytical model is uh, the, the height of, at which this regime changes as a function of the, of the tethering strength. By expanding in the bending regime and comparing with the tethering regime, we can find uh, that the inversion of the, between these two regimes is a function of the, uh, of the peeling strength, which might help uh, understand like, the uh, strength of the tethering in possible experiments. So um, this is like a sort of like small, nice uh, model of this uh, peeling, it, but it's still uh, a very simplistic picture. It would be nice to check if this is uh, actually somewhat realistic. And the first thing that uh, we did was to perform some uh, uh, realistic MD simulation using lumps and uh, some discrete force field. So we get back the real corrugation of gold and the graphene. And here you can see the peeling proceeded for uh, uh, different um, tethering strength. We have the Gilly case where the peeling is, uh, the, the tail is free, so the, the ribbon is just consumed from the hand and it goes vertically. And as we tether the, the ribbon, we see that the, both the tail and the head, the peeling front, proceeds towards the center of the nano ribbon, consuming it uh, faster and resulting in this super linear scaling of the detached part. And this effect becomes more and more strong as we increase the, the tether and the angle reduces and the peeling proceeds. Uh, always uh, faster. So the simulation, from, from this simulation, we can extract the same uh, um, quantity that our model predicted. And we see that the bending angle and the uh, peeling force as a function of the peeling height do scale exactly like it, uh, it is predicted by the model as a, this fractional uh, um, uh, exponent of the peeling height. So the critical behavior is confir confirmed by the simulation. And uh, since here we reintroduce the corrugation between uh, the gold and the nano ribbon, we see that this corrugation does not uh, destroy the observed behavior. Um, and the stick slip, uh, we can observe here by comparing the blue curve and the others, the stick slip is of course reduced by the, the, in this tether regime because now the, the, the ribbon is uh, under tension so it can deform less so the, the whole uh, uh, peeling proceeds more, uh, more smoothly. Um, so confirming the simulation, uh, we can uh, wonder like if this could be seen experimentally. And uh, a first thing that we need to check is whether temperature changes the picture considerably. And we see that uh, this effect should survive uh, almost up to room temperature according to uh, finite temperature simulation. So we see here that at zero temperature, as before, the, the the critical exponent is clear and it should survive somewhat up to uh, room temperature. Uh, between 100K and room temperature, it's still uh, uh, clearly observable, this, uh, this scaling of the uh, bending angle. Uh, what they usually measure in experiment is the frequency shift, uh, and we can also uh, see how this uh, critical behavior should uh, show up in this uh, measurement. So here I'm plotting the uh, derivative of the force with respect to the height, which is the proportional to the frequency shift. And we see that the, compared to the, the superlubric tail, which is the blue curve here, in this uh, tether regime, the, there is a clear peak at the beginning, in the beginning part of the peeling, and then the whole uh, uh, frequency shift to, should decay with the power law behavior, which, is, which becomes more and more evident as the tether becomes stronger, as we, can, as we can see here. So, um, to uh, conclude, we, can, uh, uh, we found that un rather unexpectedly in this intermediate case, uh, there is uh, some um, critical behavior of this uh, peeling, uh, which uh, depends on the, on the specific nature of the, of the, of the tether realizing experiment, but should be, should be detectable also uh, at uh, room temperature. If uh, there are some experiments that could be done on this, it would be nice to uh, understand what is the real nature of the tether, if they're really harmonic, and what maybe is the effect of different edges of the, uh, of the nano ribbon, because like these nano ribbons can be assembled in different ways, so there might be some different stick slip and behavior uh, due to the different edges. And with regard to temperature, there are two questions that will be interesting to explore. So in the large temperature limit, what is the quantitative effect of, this, uh, of the temperature on the scaling exponent? I, I show you that like, they still survive, but they're changed when we get closer to room temperature. And on the other side, at the low temperature, 
there might be uh, some uh, effect due to the quantized population of the phonon flexural mode down at the very low uh, cryogenic temperature of the system. And with this, I think I saved the coffee break, and if there are any questions. <laughs> Uh, thanks for a nice presentation. Uh, on page number nine, you have some nice uh, uh, cartoons or animations, I think. The next one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, the length of the ribbon is important here or not. Because on the top left, uh, the, the length is finite, it seems. Mm -hmm. In the other ones, it seems it's infinite or periodic. Uh, no, 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 it's uh, finite in, uh, in, uh, for every system. I, we actually compare it at uh, fixed uh, length. So that it's, uh, we compare it to like the, um, the effect of tethering for like the same length of the nano ribbon, which is uh, uh, somewhat similar to the one observed in the experiment. So like these are all uh, uh, finite size uh, ribbon where the tail needs its uh, pin or free to slide uh, a bit. But, this about, it, these are about 30 nanometers, uh, which is uh, consistent with what it's sort of like observed in uh, experiments as well. And uh, we checked, like, uh, especially in the model, uh, um, I don't think I have here in something with the simulation that it doesn't depend, like this whole behavior doesn't depend on the, on the length of the, of the nanoribbon. So it scales the same, it just takes a lot longer to reach the final point where everything detaches. The longer the nano ribbon, the more the angle can reduce. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks for the talk. I, I was wondering, what, what, what do you put on the edges of your graphing? Uh, on the edges, uh, everything is uh, saturated uh, with uh, hydrogen. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have a clearer picture of the nano ribbon, maybe. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, everything is saturated with hydrogen. Otherwise, the force field uh, it's not really happy with the loose carbon of the edges. It buckles in a in a strange way. The, uh, the experiments. The experiments are, are done in vacuum, so like, they should be saturated. Uh, we consider them to be saturated with hydrogen as well. And there shouldn't be any bigger molecules in there. Let's say. Thank you very uh, much. So in the beginning, uh, when you just start pulling, you actually have a system of negative differential stiffness. So mechanics people are usually very excited about this. Uh, question, my question actually goes to the Basel people. Have you ever seen a positive frequency shift? I mean, has the negative differential uh, uh, K so ever the, been observed? Get back to the, here basically like this. Uh, speak here basically uh, thank you uh, so we do see such a behavior I mean not this guy not, not like this I mean we see uh, a positive frequency shift but the problem is that the tip is really close to the surface so you are in a regime where you interact strongly with the surface as well so it's difficult to conclude like that I have a small question. Uh, for uh, when you when you apply uh, springs to the one one end of the wafer ribbon, uh, did you only apply normal springs and uh, along x y directions? It's 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 rigid, right? It's, the motion is fixed in x and y directions. Uh, no, the, the springs are applied in uh, in uh, every direction to the center of mass of the tail of the nano ribbon. So the, the tail is actually allowed to uh, move in the, in the Z, but it's uh, a bit tethered because uh, we assume that the tether would be uh, isotropic, basically. That, like, I wouldn't be sure like, uh, if it would apply only in uh, two directions. So it's... At the pickup, yes, it's only in the, in the Z direction. So we just lift vertically the, um, the whole system. Ah, okay. Okay. And it's fixed um, in so XY because like the 
AFM tip is a lot more massive, so it shouldn't be shifted by the by the nano ribbon. Okay. okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks.